I've been working with Nikon Super Telephotos for the last 10 years. They're essential for the work I do. When they reached out about their new 500mm f5.6 prime lens, I did not expect this. An ultralight and compact super telephoto. My job takes me to some pretty remote places and the weight of my backpack is always something I have to take into consideration. but I'll choose heavy over lack of performance any day. So I really wanted to see what this lens could do. I couldn't think of a better testing ground for performance than photographing birds. Photographing animals is a lot like photographing people. Body language and gesture are essential. I'm not interested in photographing them perched. In flight is where the action is, but it's a patience game. And when the moment presents itself, the last thing you wanna do is miss the shot. This lens is ridiculously easy to handhold. And Nikon's technology makes it not only ultra light, but razor sharp. If I needed an extra focal length boost, the ability to switch to DX mode on my Nikon D850 changes my focal length to roughly 750 millimeters without decreasing the speed of the lens. The last thing I wanna worry about is durability. The dust and drip resistant build keeps me confident that the lens will hold up in hard outdoor conditions. The autofocus locked on with precision and the VR allowed me to easily shoot in low light. This lens nailed it in every category. It's something I want in my backpack anywhere I go.
Hi, my name is Atsu Suzuki, and I am an optical engineer and a technical liaison at Nikon. I would like to talk about the new Nikon Z-mount and explain from a technical point what makes it so special. Nikon is well known for great lenses. Our company vision is to unlock the future with the power of light. We believe this new mount will help us achieve that vision. The introduction of the Z-mount is very special because it combines so much experience and knowledge from many engineers and designers over the last 100 years. The new Z-mount was developed for the new Nikon mirrorless camera and lenses, and it possesses huge potential in optical design. This mount design has two important factors. First, it has a 60mm flange back distance. Second, it has a 55mm inner mount diameter. These two dimensions give the new mount great advantages, such as the ability to support f1.2 and even f.95 aperture lens designs. I'd like to explain how designers decided on this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nikon studio here in Melville and Nikon Live Unscripted. We are live here with an unscripted show talking to talented photographers and filmmakers. And we have the lovely Dixie Dixon with us today. Before we get into Dixie, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's going on here at Nikon. Especially for you video people that are so creative with your productions, we have a follow your passion creative contest for video for you to join. You can win up to $25,000 and a filmmaker's kit, all kinds of prizes. So if you are creative and you love video, make sure you check that out at followyourpassion.com. We also have the Trade Up to Z program going on again. So if you have any camera that is working that you want to trade in for a great value to get into the Z mirrorless system, you can do that and gain a great benefit of getting into mirrorless if that's where you want to go. Now this is the second episode of Unscripted. We had an episode last month with Joe McNally a great 30-minute talk about his career and things that went on uh, in his business. So you can go back and check that out as many times as you want. But we are here today with a fascinating fashion photographer and filmmaker, <laughs> Ms. Dixie Dixon. Welcome to Hello. Unscripted. Thank you. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, we, um, we work together a lot. So okay. we'll talk about <laughs> our experiences as we go. Absolutely. We're going to talk about your career, some of the things you've done. Yeah. Hopefully talk about your book and the book that you came out with last year. Uh, you've flown in from Fort Worth, Texas? I did. Yeah, we, were, in last night. we were there together last week. And uh, when you were promoting this, I have to ask this question just to get it started. <laughs> you, you have labeled yourself a self-proclaimed nerd. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Everybody looking at you, you're a nerd? Well, that's, that's not bad. Um, yes. But why do you call yourself a nerd? I'm definitely a nerd. I grew up incredibly shy and very introverted. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm very much an introvert. I, um, I wouldn't know that, but I've known you for years. Yeah, so mm -hmm. doing photography and getting out of my comfort zone has been a big part of my career. So being that introvert, basically being an introvert is where do you gain your most energy. And for me, it's, it's through self-reflection mm -hmm. and through being alone. So when I'm around people, I get this real burst of energy, but it's definitely been a cool process being in photography and getting out of my comfort zone. So you were shy so growing up. Yes, yeah, very It's funny shy. because <laughs> you know, ambassadors like Ron McGill have learned too. He, he yes. was very shy growing up and some of our most outspoken, exciting ambassadors <laughs> are now uh, are out there. And we, yeah. We've worked together. I remember the very first time you spoke for us at CES. Oh my goodness, And how yes. we got through that and you have become one of the most remarkable speakers I've ever oh, seen up on stage. Um, <laughs> talk a little bit about how you broke into mm -hmm. photography. I mean, some people know you, some people don't. Yeah. But where did it all get started for you? And where did the creative mm -hmm. juices start to flow? And you said to yourself, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. For me, it was in the, when I made the cover of the yearbook, one of my images. I was in yearbook staff. To I get was out on the yearbook staff. You were too? Yeah, so I love yeah, it. I was. Yes. <laughs> so being on the yearbook staff was, for me, felt rebellious because I get to go to all the events and photograph them. And I sort of had a reason to be there right. as opposed to just going like as this introvert into the situation. So for me, it was a lot of getting out of that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And when I ended up making the cover, for me, that was like the moment. No longer was I going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a pediatrician, anything remotely predictable. I was going to go Were these things the things you were thinking about? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I used to want to be a veterinarian. And then I realized that I was very allergic to dogs and animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's been a really cool process. And it took a long time to break in. 
photography is a tough, uh, tough business. It, and it is. And it takes a lot of true grit to get into it. It, it is. Yeah. It's exactly what you said. It's a business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, it, it's an art form too for many, yeah. especially those that are enthusiastic about taking pictures. Mm -hmm. But if you want to sustain and run a business, uh, yes. we're going to talk about that path for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know your first camera was a Nikon FG, so you have it been a was. Nikon photographer and filmmaker from day one. I have. We're proud to hear that, and <laughs> thank you for that. We, we all appreciate that. <laughs> but um, talk a little bit about how, you know, you started off photography. I personally know you had a little bit of background in wedding photography. Yeah, absolutely. And then you transitioned into fashion. So tell me, I why did. not weddings and why fashion? <laughs> I was the worst wedding photographer ever, mm -hmm. and I remember I missed the kiss at like three weddings in a row. I was a I guess that's a, that's a tough shot to miss, huh? It is a tough <laughs> shot to miss, and you know, I'm a very slow shooter. I don't shoot quickly. Mm -hmm. I like to be able to set up the situation and craft the perfect lens with the camera and the whole scenario, so right. weddings were just too fast for me. Mm -hmm. Like, because wedding, I give so much. It's a, it's a high pressure it's thing. I mean, I give a lot of credit job. to wedding photographers. Yeah. I don't like to shoot weddings myself, yeah. because if there are moments if you miss, you just don't get those back. Exactly. Like the kiss, I guess you would say. Exactly, because you have to be a product photographer, you have to be a portrait photographer, be able to post families, all in this really fast situation. Right. And I just found that for me, it was just too fast. Wh I why like fashion though? How do, you, how do you move into fashion? So what was so cool is I got to study abroad with a world-renowned fashion photographer mm -hmm. um, my junior year of college and that is when I fell in love with fashion photography and how to bring together a team and create a concept mm -hmm. and in order to bring that concept to life and bring that brand's vision to life and that's what I really found my passion was mm -hmm. is concepting, creating the perfect scenario for everything to happen organically right. And that's why fashion really speaks to my soul. So you saw that kind of photography yeah. online or in magazines. You said, yes. that's what I've got to do. And yes. so you went to study abroad. You went on an mm -hmm. internship there? I did. I, so I was in London for three months. I think it's a very Amazing. cool fact, though, too, that you, <laughs> you were an intern for one of our other ambassadors. I was. Mr. Matthew, Matthew Jordan, Jordan Smith. Smith. Talk a little bit about how you connected yeah. with Matthew. And, and how do you get to that? I'm sure a lot of people out there that are mm -hmm. trying to grow is how do you work with other photographers? How did you approach him? Yeah. So one thing that I did in college that I thought was really helpful is a business teacher told me to join all of the trade organizations within the industry you're interested in pursuing. So I went home and I Googled photography trade organizations mm -hmm. and all of them come up like WPI, PPA, APA. Um, so I joined all of them and started entering these contests. Mm -hmm. And so one of my images won a contest. So I got to go to Imaging USA for free. Um, and then I won another contest to go to WPI for free and attend and like network with all these photographers. Right, which is a great place to yeah. network for sure. Yeah, so business. you get to really kind of learn about photography. So you the ignored business. the wedding part of that and you stuck to the <laughs> portrait part of that. I did, exactly. <laughs> How so to I catch waited. the kiss photo. <laughs> How to make the kiss photo. Exactly. So I literally waited in line after Matthew was speaking. Mm -hmm at a PPA event and I waited in line for an hour to talk to him and I asked him if I could assist him next time I'm in LA and believe it or not I called him up when I was in town and I got to assist him on some really beautiful shoots that he did mm -hmm. and that was one of my very first internships. And, and the one thing that attracts me to Matthew, um, yeah. outside of he's a gorgeous man, thank you Matthew, <laughs> he is, beautiful. Uh, is the fact that he's just got such a great demeanor mm -hmm. and I see that uh, that you have that same thing yeah. going on and I think you know when you when you bring that kind of demeanor, relaxed atmosphere, and that great, bubbly, totally. energetic atmosphere, yeah. it affects everybody on set, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I'm so big on the energy on set. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone's bringing any kind of negative energy, I'll bring them outside and have a talk with them. Because mm -hmm. the truth is, is, it translates into the images. Mm -hmm. You can see instantly if the model is comfortable in the image through her eyes. So I have to ask this, because everybody's going to ask this, yeah. but you know, you, you have clearly labeled yourself DixieDixon.com. You, you, you have a brand, <laughs> yes. right? You have a style. Yes. Um, I have been one of the fortunate people, amongst others, if yeah. they do check out your Facebook page or Instagram page, do you ever not wear a hat? I mean, for those people <laughs> that think you never take that this hat off. This is scripted. I guess I should have taken my hat off. And, and, and you are an ambassador for a hat company as well. I not am. only a Nikon ambassador, but yes, a hat company. But uh, I want to definitely delve into, especially for those that are starting a business, how mm -hmm. How do you brand yourself? <coughs> what are the things that you've done to continue the brand? Have yeah. you changed it along the way? Mm -hmm. and, and address the fact that I believe, who we would affectionately call Mama Bear, your yeah, mom, absolutely. had a lot to do with your styling and branding. Let's talk about that a little she bit. She did, yes. So the two biggest things with branding 
is authenticity mm -hmm. and consistency. Mm -hmm. So you need to showcase your personality and your brand from the way that you shoot and your style of shooting right. to also how you show up on set, what's your style like, because um, all these things create this experience for your brand. Mm -hmm. And if you're consistent in that, people are gonna start to notice your brand mm -hmm. in a bigger way than just your normal run-of-the-mill photography company. Mm -hmm. um, so it becomes this sort of organic process. And the more that you get to know yourself as a person and a photographer, the more you're gonna be able to express your brand within your imagery and your um, the way you say things, the way you send emails, all of these right. things go into the brand. So it's definitely been a process. Mama Bear was a huge, and huge Mama part of Bear, that. I, I'm sure Mama <laughs> Bear, you may be uh, tuning in right now. We miss you. I just saw her last week. Yes. And your dad, Danny. Um, both great influences to oh, you? Oh, absolutely. My dad career. had a big background in photography mm -hmm. and gave me my first camera. And Mama I Bear. saw his uh, artillery yeah. of equipment. I've seen his lineup of equipment. He's got yes, a nice, uh, he's got nice a great set of equipment. Setup. Right. And then uh, as far as the hat thing, I always love wearing hats. Mm -hmm. I'm big on costumes and, you know, I just thought, you know what, I feel way more creative wearing a hat. So my mom was like, you should just wear a hat every time you shoot. It kind of mm -hmm. kind of be a part of your brand. So it's become this thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working with hat lines and all these different things. Well, I do want everybody to know that when I have <laughs> actually been picked up by Dixie several times, you are not wearing a hat. That's true. So I do I, take it I off I have sometimes. seen the Dixie with the I hat, the Dixie with without, on. and it's just, <laughs> as, just as good. And, um, yes. and so uh, it, it's great. And, have you changed from the beginning? I mean, did you start off going in a certain direction with your brand and then shift it? Or how did you progress? How do you grow that? Well, you know, I started out, it definitely has evolved. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to call myself the photographer next door and mm -hmm. I've evolved from that. Um, right. And now I've just gone with my name because I think that sort of showcases who I am as a photographer and a person. Um, my brand's very friendly, it's happy, it's, mm -hmm. it's what, as a person and a brand, what my goal is on a shoot is to everyone to leave set a more confident person than when they arrived. And that's really my biggest that's thing. Awesome. And that's what I love, photography and that connection. Mm -hmm. And bringing out the best in people is really my biggest passion. And speaking of connection, mm -hmm. you have a way of connecting with people when you first meet them. Yeah. And as you were running around the Nikon building here, and I, I <laughs> toured you around our new facility here. Yes, it's amazing. You, you, you did something with almost everybody. What, yes. How do you connect with somebody? Um, I'm a hugger. Mm -hmm. I'm a big hugger. Yep. And I feel like that creates that instant connection. Mm -hmm. And so I think I have hugged everyone in the building. Did anybody back <laughs> off? Did anybody no, feel like... No, nobody gave me the awkward side Do you get that on set, great. though? Do you have Sometimes. anybody that would back off? And then now do you just avoid them for the rest of the shoot? <laughs> or do you do you look for opportunities to try to connect with them? Oh, I definitely try to connect. Try to, try to sell yourself. Try, yeah. to, try to sell the moment. Try to sell Absolutely. that happiness. Yeah, I think having the music flowing on set and then also doing a lot of research before every job I do. Mm -hmm. So I try to get to know not only the models but the client as well. Mm -hmm. And then I try to ask them questions about themselves that's really the easiest way to get people out of their comfort zone and getting into that connection is mm -hmm. really ask them questions. So you have created so. this brand, Dixie yeah. Dixon, mm -hmm. DixieDixon.com. Again, yes. I could recite your message. I can recite, <laughs> you know, how you present yourself. Yeah. Uh, what, what advice to anybody that's looking to brand themselves? Mm -hmm. What do they target? What do they look for? How do they know what's them? Yeah. I, it just really comes through a lot of shooting. Mm -hmm. I mean, your style isn't something that you have to go out and find, it's already within you. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can get to know yourself as a person and what your interests are and how you best connect with people, you really gotta find your own. And mm -hmm. that really just comes through experience and through shooting a ton right. and then finding your niche. So I think the best way is just to keep shooting. I mean, just shoot, shoot, shoot constantly. Always be shooting, and you're going to find that style organically unfold. And and I have to say that you do. Um, uh, for those of you out there, I've been on, what have we been on, about a dozen shoots together, if not more? Yes. And I've watched you go into your twilight after the shoot was over for an hour. Yeah. And we're like, where's Dixie? Well, Dixie grabbed the model. She's back outside by the pool. <laughs> and we're all like, we got to catch flights. Um, <laughs> but you don't stop, do you? I don't stop. How do you know when to stop then? Ooh, you know... Joe McNally is always saying the moment it clicks. Right. I always know when I got that shot, mm -hmm. and I always know when I can push it that much further to get an even more amazing shot. So if I haven't felt like that I've gotten it, I don't feel it in my soul and in my heart, I'm mm -hmm. still shooting. Yeah, we, yep. we, we talked about that in Joe's episode, uh, yeah. a little bit about the moment it clicks, which was the title of his first book, and we'll, right. we'll get to your book in just a little bit. <laughs> but 
as you've evolved, talk about a little bit of the fears mm -hmm. for you. You can't just walk in. It's not a party every time, right? No, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 everybody sees the end result. And mm -hmm. We've always said this, that you know the best photographers in the world don't show the bad stuff. But Rich Clarkson <laughs> of Sports Illustrated used to use that at his workshop all absolutely. the time. Absolutely. And uh, so I give credit to uh, Rich. But um, yeah. it, it couldn't have been an easy path the entire time. Mm -hmm. Were there any stumbling blocks, anything you had to run into, things you had to overcome? Absolutely. I think one of the biggest um, stumbling blocks is the fact that it takes so long to break into the niche of photography that you love. Mm -hmm. So I was shooting everything when I was starting out, from weddings to portraits to product photography, but I really wanted to just be shooting this fashion lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So for me, the big lesson was to differentiate and separate them. So for instance, I started out having a wedding and portrait website separate from my fashion website. So mm -hmm. I would send my fashion website out to fashion clients and I would only send the wedding and portrait off to the wedding and portrait client. So that separation Hoping is that really nobody important. from the wedding side would ever say yes, right? <laughs> <Just> yeah. <laughs> and I'm raising the prices. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's definitely a big part of it. You really have to show what it is that you want to shoot. Mm -hmm. And that's really the name of the game in this industry. So you got to go out and shoot a ton of personal work mm -hmm. so that you can enable to show that because people are going to hire you for what you do best. Mm -hmm. So you have to show what you do best. So, so you have to build that portfolio. One of the highlights, I think, and would you consider this a defining moment, was yeah. you did a TV show early on, right? Mm -hmm. and shooting. I did. Um, so yeah. talk a little bit about how that happened. I mean, did it come <laughs> out of nowhere? Did you look for it? Did somebody come yeah. to you because they saw your work? Mm -hmm. How do you end up on a TV show about photography? And, and talk yeah. a little bit about what it was. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. So basically, it was a docu-reality travel show, and it was on... Docu-reality. Docu-reality, docu yes. Good. All right, got and that. And it was on uh, HDNet. Have you right. heard of HDNet? It's mm -hmm. now Axis Television, mm -hmm. Smart Cuban Station. Right. So through the weddings, um, a girl that I had assisted weddings, she was also a video editor, mm -hmm. um, Turquoise Video Productions, amazing video people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they knew that this show, this producer, was looking for a photographer for the show, and so she put my name to this producer, and he... Um, I met with him and I showed him my portfolio from college. This is literally while I'm still in school. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you'd be great for the show. Why don't you come on and shoot for it? So literally the show ran 20 seasons. Mm -hmm. um, it was called, uh, it was a show called Get Out. And basically I got to be the photographer on this show. So right. I was shooting swimsuit models for a living for about four years mm -hmm. <laughs> out of That's college. That's horrible. It's a horrible it's thing terrible. to do. Beaches, <laughs> nice weather, right? Yeah, it was, it was unreal. Experience. And so the show did very well, and that did, that, did. did that put you on the map even more? I mean, at this point, are people coming to your website, or mm -hmm. did you have a website at this? I, I mean, had a website at the when time. When we met, you had mm -hmm. a portfolio book. Yes. I remember we met at a WPPI, yeah. and a guy named George Varanakis brought you in, yep. and he said, mm -hmm. you got to meet this photographer. <laughs> And what did I do, if I remember correctly, I, I introduced you to everybody there. You did. And then a noted ambassador, Nikon Jerry, Nikon's Jerry Guionis, yes. came up, and I remember exactly what he said to you. Do you remember what he said? I, you got to remind me. I will tell you. He said, I hope you're making a living doing this. I <laughs> hope you're making money doing this because you're phenomenal. Yes. And right there, we kind of knew that there was a really great connection with you, the brand, yeah. and us. So, and it's been quite a few years since then. It's been amazing. And we've, we've worked a lot together. Absolutely. Um, Talk about how you do something that's very important to you. Mm -hmm. Put the right people around you. Ah, yes. Now, I, I, I know you have referred to them as your dream team. Absolutely. And of course, I feel lucky enough to be adopted, or anybody from Nikon that comes on your yes. shoot is adopted into the dream team. Definitely. Anybody here in this production room is part of Dixie's mm -hmm. dream team right now. I want you to talk about how you build a team around you mm -hmm. and how important that is for your business and how do you know it's the right person. Ooh, I love that. You know, I know you hired a producer. Yes. You know, how did that come to be? Yeah. One of the biggest things on building a dream team, I think, is finding people that creatively inspire you and that are on the same level that you are creatively. And for me, it took years. It took mm -hmm. years. I can remember networking on modelmayhem.com, mm -hmm. um, Facebook, and then suddenly I do this job with this amazing producer. It was a job for Magpul, and we did this three-day shoot, this amazing shoot, and it just flowed so well. I had an amazing lighting person on that set. Is that, that the set. calendar you do have almost every yes, year? We had that calendar is. floating around the building. It's a gorgeous <laughs> calendar. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that client was really a huge stepping off point for me. That was one of my first big, big productions. Mm. And 
I remember meeting this producer and this lighting person that I just really gelled with, mm -hmm. and um, they really brought the best out of me and my photography. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was like from then on, I've worked with them on every single production. And we are talking about Eric and Nancy. Eric, <laughs> I, I, I love Eric. Eric yes. is uh, probably one of the most efficient. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, every detail he's got down, he knows everything. He, he does. teaches you things about weight and capacity and light and structure and where it comes from and uh, electricity and why there's so much electricity on a certain yes. block in Fort Worth. And <laughs> it's almost like uh, I'm dating myself, but Cliff Clavin of, of a show called Cheers, who knew everything, <laughs> but he brings his game every time. Oh and yeah. And the thing I love about Eric as well as everybody on your team, yeah. there's a lot of respect on set. There's a huge amount of respect. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and everybody is called boss. Yep. When I was on the shoot, mm -hmm. I was M-boss, you're D-boss, Eric is E-boss, and Nancy is Nancy Bear, yes, right? Your boss. producer. Talk a little bit about how you got connected Absolutely. with Nancy. How do you hire a producer? How do you yeah. hire a full-time or, or even part-time yeah. employee? Yeah, so I just a uh, year ago brought on Nancy full-time. Mm -hmm. So she's producing all of my jobs. Um, so she'll do the estimating, the invoicing, the um, hiring of the models, the having soup, the food on set. She basically keeps this thing running um, effectively and smoothly. So I love working with her. She definitely inspires me creatively. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it was a very interesting experience starting out and getting in the zone. But the truth is in photography, you have to learn what to delegate. Right. That is the biggest thing. And the only thing that you cannot delegate is the maintenance, maintenance of your dream. Right. That's the thing that you cannot delegate. You've always got to get that fresh and in the picture. And then you can delegate the other things like accounting and invoicing and the stuff that isn't creative, that isn't photography related. But you got everybody to buy into your dream though. Yes. Somehow. I Absolutely. mean, even though you mm -hmm. can't, you know, pass off everything about that dream, mm -hmm. you got them to buy into yes. that whole philosophy of working together that yeah. way. Because I have been in all kinds of sets and when there's a lot of ego involved, Oh and there's gosh. a lot of animosity and just mm -hmm. like even just blunt ways that people talk to each other it's not a comfortable place to be right and I think that sets a tone that even the models pick up on mm -hmm. which probably you know would probably destroy a shoot for the most Definitely. part or at least someone's not going to bring out the best of what they have exactly. uh, I would think in those environments because that's really what keeps clients coming back it's mm -hmm. not only especially in this industry where there's so much competition mm -hmm. it's not only the beautiful images you create that's kind of like a given like you've got to be able to live to deliver consistent amazing sure. images mm -hmm. it's really that experience and the client having fun on set that's going to keep them coming back and keep hiring you to create these longevity sure I mean yeah. sometimes it's not about being the best photographer in the world right? is being about the best mm -hmm. business person exactly. and being that person on set. I, I heard this a long time ago. Someone said to me about any kind of business, nobody likes the unhappy person in the room. <laughs> so you always want to be the happiest person in the room. Definitely. So Dixie Dixon, she gets her FG. She goes on internship. She works with Matthew Jordan Smith. She goes over and works with a great fashion photographer. And then all of a sudden things start to shift in your career. Yeah. And you start to shift into directing. Yes. Now, you talk about <laughs> delegation. I, I personally, you're talking to a guy, give me a sports moment, give me an action moment, give me a child running around, give me rock yeah. and roll. I want to create moments as they happen. Yeah. Storyboarding is not my thing. Right. Where do you make this transition from going from still photography, how do you do that, mm -hmm. to going to directing? What, what led you to becoming a director? And you direct TV commercials, correct? I do, yeah. yes. And I know we're going to load one up and we'll, we'll see it uh, from <laughs> my favorite company, uh, everybody's favorite company, Poopery. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but how do you become a director? Oh my gosh, it was a really interesting process. I feel like so many things in my career have come up and it's almost like me jumping into the deep end of the pool and figuring out how to swim. Right. That's what's so fun about this industry. It mm -hmm. keeps you on your toes in that way. Right. So I had a production company reach out to me and they love my fashion vision. Right. And they said, hey, we want you to direct this TV commercial for this hair company. Right. And so I was point blank told the production company, um, not the client, that I had never directed a, a commercial before. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, we love your vision. We think you can do it. So Why it was about you? you. It wasn't necessarily about your skill set at that point. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So he said, to come up with a storyboard. So I Googled storyboard. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Listen, no. you go to the Google. When you need to know something, you got to go search it. Sometimes yes. Sometimes you got to uh -huh. use your resources. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I went and storyboarded the whole shoot. I showed it to the production company. They loved it. Mm -hmm. And so we created this TV commercial, which ran on television for a couple years and ended up winning an Addy Award. What's, so a, like what's Addy as part of the advertising business? Yeah, it's business. an advertising oh. award. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? Directing could be a whole nother niche for me that I 
you know, I've always kind of been excited about and curious about, mm -hmm. and it sort of fell into my lap in that way just from shooting the fashion work that I shoot. So, so. I, I know we have uh, this uh, commercial queued up that you did yeah. for Poopery. It's about a minute <laughs> and a half long. Um, we have our producer, Brian, setting it up. Brian, can you run yeah. that uh, commercial? So, so privy is that the <laughs> high-end line of poopery? This is this is the high-end version of poopery. So, which what is makes that high-end compared <laughs> to anything else you're doing to eliminate <laughs> certain odors? It I has essential oils. Essential oil. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure the toilet bowl loves that. They <laughs> love that. Yep. Um, so you you come up with a concept for this commercial. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sleep? Because I can't imagine. <laughs> I'd like you to just at least explain a little bit about. They come to you, Poopery. They want to do this commercial. You've done still shoots for them before. I have. Now yes. you're now you're progressing into the directing side. Yeah. How do you go through this process? Where does it start? When do you bring other people in? You make the production and then it ends. Take us through a little bit of that journey. Yeah. So Privy or Poopery sent me some basic videos that they were liking. I'm trying to keep fashion. a straight face. When I you know say it's poopery. hard to say that word. It is, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. So Poopery so brings you in. Privy. Yeah. So they kind of have an idea that they want to work with me on something, but right. they don't really have a refined idea. Mm -hmm. So they send me a few inspiration clips. And for me, I have to go into a meeting with a, a concept, an idea to pitch them. And this concept actually came to me in the shower um, when I was just kind of thinking, you know, I feel like the best ideas always come through like meditation or sure. working out when mm -hmm. my mind is free to think. Right. And uh, so it came to me and I pitched them the idea and they loved it, um, and then ba they basically let me run with it. That's really the, the dream as a photographer and a director right. is for them to go with your vision and let you run with your, your vision and your dream, and that's very rare. Mm -hmm. Most clients like to sort of pigeonhole and right. um, dictate a lot of the shoot. But Did they cut you off at all at no, any time? I mean, so they, they just let you go 100%, sort of it's all, all you, it. we got this, mm -hmm. you know, you got this, we yeah. trust you. I mean, they definitely give some feedback and they change the direction of it just mm -hmm. slightly, but they were really creative and I feel like like attracts like. It's a mm -hmm. law of attraction at work. Right. I attract certain clients that sometimes give me a lot of creative freedom, which sure. is an amazing experience. So you're in the shower and you think about this woman yeah. that has to go. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> she's got to go really bad. She pulls up in a convertible. <laughs> it's a very high-end thing, but she goes to the, the yes. ladies' room and there's a line of people, which I thought was brilliant, that they were all dressed exactly, <laughs> exactly the, the same, same. Mm -hmm. which just kind of numbs out who they are and it doesn't right. distract from her, the main model, right? Exactly. Are you thinking about all these things Absolutely. as you do that? Because, I mean, one of my favorite parts is when the gentleman at the urinal turns back and goes, you know, mouths a certain Don't thing, right? Yes. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And it just carried you the whole way. And, yeah. and, and talk a little bit about the use of, the use of slow motion in that because mm -hmm. something about that technique yes. makes me feel more connected to the video. I don't know oh what yeah. it is, but so mm -hmm. you use that technique a lot. We do, especially in fashion photography because you can get the movement of fabrics and get the music going. Um, that slow motion is key. Mm -hmm. And the Z7 is really amazing tool for that. And mm -hmm. You know, we do a lot, almost everything we shoot is in slow motion. Right. Unless we're shooting behind the, se behind the scenes or something like that. Just to get mm -hmm. those small in-between moments that the normal eye doesn't see. And so we, we last year, under very covert operations, yeah. <laughs> worked together in the summer um, with did. Z. 
And uh, I can assure you all that when Dixie works on set, it was a brutal <laughs> four days <laughs> of shooting. I wore you guys out. Uh, you did. And, and, and again, I, I've never seen a crew work so hard for somebody. Mm -hmm. And even at the end, when you were looking for a donkey in the shoot, and we tried to go out to the field and lasso a donkey right. in this you know, ranch Sunset. that we were shooting in, yes. and the donkeys would run. And, and I'm like, OK, well, give up already. You don't <laughs> give up, do I you? I don't give up. And you ended up with a donkey exactly where we needed mm -hmm. a donkey. In 10 minutes before the sun went down. 10 minutes before the sun yes. went down. Yes, my crew works so hard. Mm -hmm. Everyone is Is they're just afraid in. to say no to you, or just do you ask so politely <laughs> that they just can't say no? You, well, I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> I, I just love that process. Mm -hmm. And when they're as excited about the final product as I am, right. everyone just works together so amazingly. I mean, the thing is, is I think the true show of how people work together is you don't know who the boss is on set. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to walk onto my set, you would think, you know, what is she doing? I'm not overly empowered, I like completely powerful. agree with that, right. It's more of an organic, like we're all just, we're, it's almost like a dance of mm -hmm. how we all work together. And having to build the right people around you is really the main way to get that sort of feeling on set, is mm -hmm. that we all work together. We don't even have to say anything and we can work together. Yeah, so I felt easily. that on shoots, from makeup yeah. artists to, you know, the stylists. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a role, and even the models kind of play a role, yeah. you know, at times. And, and, and you use Definitely. them as, uh, they work as assistants mm -hmm. to Eric, but they also <laughs> work as models. If and they need to. Yeah, which exactly. is great, because I think that kind of dynamic is what keeps a mm -hmm. shoot going. So that's a good lesson for everybody, is to, yeah. you know, find the right people, work with the right people, build that team, mm -hmm. and leave the ego at the door. Exactly. And if there is that exactly. vibe, you got to deal with it, right? You have, have you ever had to deal with a negative vibe on set? I have. Do you kick them in the butt and get them out? <laughs> or do you exactly try do. to talk to them? <laughs> or do you just give them a hug and maybe it's all better? Or you know, have you ever had a bad experience that way? I've had some experiences mm -hmm. where there's been, and it's never from my crew, it's mm -hmm. always from the client. Uh -huh. So with clients, you sort of have to dance around their ego a little bit because obviously they're paying you to be there and they're you know, investing a lot of money in what it is you're creating. So mm -hmm. you can't say, hey, dude, check your ego at the door. You can't say that to a client. Yeah. So for me, it's a matter of just kind of massaging it and getting to know them and what they're looking for. And sometimes I might take them aside and say, hey, we need to get, keep the positive energy flowing. I actually did that on a set mm -hmm. uh, once. And I talked with the client. And I said he's bringing a lot of negative energy to mm -hmm. our set. And mm -hmm. the model was feeling it. And he immediately stepped back and apologized and yeah. said, hey, OK, I totally get that. I'm going to let you guys do your thing. Mm -hmm. um, but as a photographer, like anything can go wrong, but it's always going to land on me. Mm -hmm. Like it's my sure. final responsibility to say something if something isn't working or the makeup isn't working because it's all going to fall on me at the end of it. For every shoot so we've done, you I, have have to speak up. I have never heard mm -hmm. you raise your voice though. No. And that's just <laughs> not a part of who you are. It's not. Yeah. It's really and, not. And I get that. Mm -hmm. and so I'm going to put you on the spot. And how was I as a client on several of our shoots? Did you ever want to kick me off set? No. Why not? You I were thought I was a nasty on client. Set. Not at all. Listen, again, during those shoots last year with it's very Z, high pressure, though. By the time we got to the last shoot at that ranch, mm -hmm. it was what 105 degrees yes. every day. You don't like in that environment. Why didn't we shoot in a studio? But we <laughs> had to be outdoors. We did. That was a brutal shoot, and I think it was tough on all of us. I remember us driving back. It was about an hour and a half back mm -hmm. to uh, Dallas or Fort Worth, yeah. and we both broke down in tears yeah you know so it's, it's not it's not always process. fun and games right I mean, we, we, we legitimately um broke broke down mm -hmm. and i think we just kind of let it out at that point we ended up getting coffee and mm -hmm. you know some some snacks and, and yeah. ended up home well when things are very under wrap as you know shooting a prototype there's yeah. a lot of pressure on sure. set because you don't want the word to get out. You want don't want some person to randomly walk in. That was my pressure on set as a, a client camera too, right? That's not released yet. Yep. So for us, we're that adds like an extra weight of pressure that we have to mm -hmm. deal with. So at the end of the shoot, we all got what we needed. Nothing, you know, terrible happened or got released. But I got to say though, with Eric on set, I yeah. never have a worry. That's true. He is um, on it. I want to give a couple of minutes. I mean, this is going so fast. I, I could talk to you for hours. This is so much fun. So but. Fun. Um, talk a little bit about your book. Um, we have it here on the table, Fashion yes. and Lifestyle Photography, <laughs> Dixie Dixon. This is your first book. It is my first book. Why a book? Crazy. Why, w why would you want to get into a book? You and, know? and how much did it take out of you <laughs> along with every other thing you were mm -hmm. doing? Because you can't just go out and produce shoots and keep working. Right. I know a book is a burden. How did you make it all happen? It was tough. It was tough because I'm already strapped for time because I put everything I have into all my shoots. Um, so for me, it was always the after hours that I was working, like late mm -hmm. nights on the book. And I can remember the book company approached me actually at a trade show. And so somebody approached you? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was actually speaking at the Nikon booth, 
And this company based out of London, mm -hmm. they approached me and said, hey, we would love for you to, to work with you on a book project. Mm -hmm. And so I said, cool, that sounds really neat. Mm -hmm. uh, so we continued talking and they, you know, they asked if I wanted a ghostwriter. And I said, you know, if I'm gonna write a book, I'm actually gonna write a book. Like so it's gonna be in my with language. Everything else you're doing. Yes. I mean I can't I can't just, you know, half do anything. I always go all in. So for me it was a fun process of putting everything that I've learned so far in this industry into mm -hmm. something tangible that people can can now read. Because for me when I was starting out it was hard to know where to start with fashion photography and breaking into the commercial industry from like portraits and weddings to that then commercial industry. So for me, I put everything, my heart and soul into that book. It was so a really like thererapeutic process. So this book teaches, so tells stories. It does. It's, so it's a little bit of everything. It's, it's a not just a storytelling book. It's going to yeah. teach the people as well. Exactly. Yep. How to break into the business. And they just translated it into Spanish. So this nice. is a Spanish edition. And I was excited that they didn't use my picture on a picture of me on the cover. I like this well, picture. Well, I better. don't mind the picture of you on the cover, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I so get funny. it. I yeah. get it. Well, again, sometimes you want to present your art on the cover exactly. of anything, That's and what having I a cover love. shot is what we all live for, right? Yes. I think. Um, but um, so you also partnered with somebody that wrote the opening of this I book. Did. Who was that? Yes, the iconic Kathy Ireland. Kathy Ireland, a model, she is a swimsuit amazing. model, and. But she's, she's an entrepreneur now. I mean, she she's is. a huge business mogul. Yeah, now. she went to being on 13 consecutive issues of Sports Illustrated to now having 17,000 products licensed in the market. <laughs> so she's gone from like that being is one super model to crazy super important mogul. woman. She is she is amazing. And uh, I met her at a, a dinner, mm -hmm. and I pitched her this project to work with her on some amazing shots, fashion shots of her, and mm -hmm. it came together in this beautiful collaboration. Yep. And art show and so I ended up asking if she would write the forward to my book and she actually did it. So she you're sitting incredible. at a dinner, <laughs> the famous Kathy Ireland is over at another table. Yes. You just kind of slide over and bump her and say, excuse me, or do you walk up to her and say, hi, I'm Dixie Dixon and <laughs> I'm cool and I'm a fashion photographer and I want to pitch you an idea and that she doesn't turn around. I didn't pitch her the idea at oh, the dinner. This, okay. is, this is after the fact, but. But that's how um, you made the connection. Yeah. And we, then you I talked to her just enterprise, had a really all cool the people connection. in her entourage. I know she's got a lot of people in her entourage she too. She does. She but does. Uh, I did, I, I, one of my great pleasures was going to your book opening in Fort yeah. Worth at uh, Fort Worth Camera, right? That's right. And, uh, Love Fort Worth and she was there and uh, <laughs> thank you both for signing my book. But uh, if you want uh, to learn a little bit about uh, what Dixie does, this is a, a great way to do that. Now, again, we're <laughs> We could do this for hours. Oh my gosh, and I'm having a blast. We didn't go to the British accent <laughs> once, right? Because <laughs> we, we always do that on we the phone. Why do we do British. that? <laughs> Why do we talk in British on the phone? Uh, maybe it's just a cooler way it. to go. It is. But as we do with uh, every unscripted episode, we mm -hmm. reach out to uh, the people that uh, follow us on Facebook and Perfect. Twitter. Yeah. And uh, many of them send in some great questions, some of which we've already answered uh, yeah. uh, so far because uh, you know, we think alike and we all want to know where you've come from, what you've done. Absolutely. Um, at Vasha Photog mm -hmm. <laughs> has asked, what brought you success early in your career? Mm. Crazy, crazy focus. Yeah. Crazy focus. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that in my heart that this was my ultimate passion. Right. And nothing was going to stop me from doing that. Mm -hmm. That laser sharp focus is what keeps you going after that dream. Because it was such a passion of mine. So when you're starting out, just having that laser sharp focus and and not um, like a lot of people. For instance, I actually got a job right out of college. I right. applied for a job. It was because I majored in business, right. and I ended up getting an investment job right out of college that I thought I was going to take. And until my mentor was like, you know what, if you're going to do photography, now is the time right. before you get locked in this lifestyle of this eight to five job mm -hmm. and, you know, getting the nice car and the nice, you know, house and all this stuff. So for me, keeping that real in the beginning right. and not blowing a bunch of money and getting this eight to five job was a jumping off point because mm -hmm. I figured out how to be in this business because it's a hard business. Sure I'd never know sometimes where the next job is coming from. Right. And so you have to be cool with that and in it for the long haul and that longevity. So I think just having that laser sharp focus and going for your dream is the big part. You got to go past that fear. Mm -hmm. And that was for me turning that down, that investment job was me jumping over that fear. You've often said, and I've heard you say this a number of times, you're married to your career. Yes. Does uh, I, I ask you every once in a while and I call <laughs> you, who are you two-stepping with these days? <laughs> 
Um, you are truly married to the career. I There's love not a lot it. of other time for doing other things personally, is there? I love it. You know, I've found a balance, mm -hmm. and definitely in the beginning, I have been completely dedicated to this. Mm -hmm. And when you're starting in, as an entrepreneur, there's just so many things that you have to do sure. before you're able to delegate the things that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So it, I've definitely been married to my career throughout this process, and I think I'm starting to find some balance now with being able to get away from it and come back to it a little bit um, because I feel like that makes me more creative when I can go and take a couple days off here and there mm -hmm. and get back into it but there's definitely a balance there you got to find what works for when you when you take a couple of days off tell yes. the truth do you bring in a camera <laughs> yes <laughs> your couple of days off recently was in Paris right it was in yes it was in Paris you went to Paris I've seen I you in did. Italy you go out with your family family's important to you it's right? extremely important yeah I know it's, I a, mean, it's a great group you've been around and I, I get to it's a great pleasure when I get to hang with them over they're there incredible. Um, they're incredible my rock at W Kerwin mm -hmm. what's the most important tip you would give photographers that may start their own business Ooh, definitely learn the business side. So have you got to get your insurance. you got to mm -hmm. get that dialed. I use TCP insurance. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Um, and so if anything happens on set, the equipment breaks, stuff like that, that's an incredible, important part. Um, definitely go after what you would really want to shoot. Right. You want to definitely go after that niche and show people what it is you want to shoot and having that laser sharp focus. Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, there's so many things. I could just go on and I on. Think, I think it's so important to, to just not just bypass. Learning business. Yes, is learn the business side. More important than being a photographer. It is. You have and to learn how to, to find the money to pay mm -hmm. for a studio monthly or find right. money to buy gear and, and deal with Definitely. taxes and amortize it and mm -hmm. run that business by building it from the ground up. Yeah. And, um, and it, it it's not just let me go buy a camera and lens, right? You're right. putting a system together mm -hmm. that you can rely on. If something goes wrong, you have your backups, right? I mean, so how important is that? Backup is extremely important. Which makes me want to ask, what's your favorite lens? I'm sure somebody Ooh, out there is going to ask. If you lens. had one to work with, what would it be? Right now, it's the uh, Nikkor 105. Uh, one four. One four. That's my favorite lens, and Jerry's Love favorite lens, lens, and Joe's favorite lens, it's and Amy's favorite, favorite lens. lens. It's, it's uh, so it is. It, it, it was a nice dynamic yeah. to go from like typically what would be an eighty-five millimeter focal length to mm -hmm. one hundred five, and then yeah. never go back. Right? It's incredible. It's a hard Just thing the, to do. The compression and bokeh. This is a great question by at n eight underscore brown. Yeah. When you look at a picture of somebody, what's the first thing you notice? Ah, uh, always now, the eyes. Yeah. Always the eyes. For me, it's all about the eyes because if you think about what you want to do when you, you when you make a picture is to control the viewer's eye as it goes around the picture. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about the leading lines and all these things that draw that person's eyes back to where you want it to be in the photograph. Right. And for my photographs, I always go to the model's eyes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a connection point. Mm -hmm. You can really see through the soul through those eyes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to focus on that because the viewer is always going to go to the brightest, sharpest point in the picture, so the eyes better be sharp. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to give a little credit to at photo Kafer, K A E F E R, because that question was, <laughs> uh, "What's her most loved piece of gear?" So you've answered that in yes. the 105, 105. right? 105. Um, Do you want the non-camera one? Answer? Yeah. Well, I, I, at at Braddy, B R A D D I E 22. Yeah. Uh, asked, um, well, let me answer this one first. How to make non-models? comfortable during photo shoots? Ooh, yes. And then definitely. we'll finish off with that question you just alluded to. But okay. So the way that you can make non-models comfortable, do a lot of research beforehand. You definitely want to research um, the kind of music they like, what they're into, because that's going to instantly You're going to have that ease. playing on set when they come in. Yes, mm -hmm. always have that music playing when they, when they arrive. And then always have some questions to ask them. So you'll kind of know what they're into to know what, you, what to ask them on set and create that sort of tone. And then I always, the way that I shoot, especially with non-models, I shoot through moments. Mm. So I'll give the model an action. And if they're not, you know, because a lot of people will just stand there. They don't know what to do. Yeah, that's so probably the number one thing that yeah. is an issue, right? Or you'll give someone else for them to focus on and talk to in order cr to create this sort of um, movement and more natural expression. So I may not get everything in the beginning of what I'm looking for, but I shoot through moments mm -hmm. as opposed to posing. I don't do a lot of posing when I shoot. Right. Uh, so when you shoot through moments, you're gonna get those split seconds where they look beautiful and natural. Right. And sometimes it, it may take 100 frames to get that shot. Yeah. And that's the beauty of digital. <laughs> Thousands of frames on a shoot, couple hundred frames on oh a shoot, yeah. it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter as long as you get the shot. Because it's the one that you want. Exactly. So what you're alluding to, at BettmanPhotography.com mm -hmm. says, your favorite non-camera gear <laughs> in your bag you guys would never guess this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I don't know that I have a guess. You 
don't have a guess? Um, I don't know. No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to tell you what it is. What is it? It is a battery-operated leaf blower. <laughs> And All you're right. Like, okay. What? Now, now I see this? it. Now I see it. All right. So I always like Why? to capture. Okay. I like to capture movement in the hair of the models. Right. So those huge hair fans are really tough to bring on location mm -hmm. out in the middle of a field. Yep. So we actually go to the Home Depot store and grab a battery-operated leaf blower, and we'll have that on set for the makeup artists to blow the models' hair. Mm -hmm. So we use them all the time. So outside of us going to Brad Paisley tomorrow night at yes. Jones Beach, yes. what do you got coming up? Anything? Oh my gosh, yes. Lots of campaigns. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I'm shooting with So the, the work is regular and it's still the steady. Yeah, the, the work has been nonstop. Mm -hmm. We're doing a cool denim campaign and a beauty campaign coming up. So it's, uh, God, this, this career has been the most fun adventure that I could but ever you, describe. But you haven't even really started. I know. I feel you. like I'm just getting started. The world is getting started. It's but crazy. So it's DixieDixon.com for the web. Yes. And I am Dixie yeah. Dixon. I am Dixie mm -hmm. Dixon for all of your social handles. It is. So you got to have the I am in front. Definitely uh, <laughs> check her out. Check out the work. If you haven't known Dixie up to this point, I know many of you that tuned in uh, have known her. But uh, if you haven't really dig into her work, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, it just keeps getting better, and, and <laughs> I have personally watched you grow, not only as a photographer, but a presenter at the various trade shows. Yeah. And um, I can't thank you enough for being here with us. This is, oh my gosh, this is a lot amazing. of fun, and it, it's so exciting, and it's, it's even better when we have a bit of history together that we can talk about and share. Yes. But I do uh, appreciate everybody that has tuned in to this uh, unscripted episode. Uh, we know from the beginning, our producer Brian said, if you go over a little bit, it's okay. Um, <laughs> and keep that conversation going. But we totally appreciate you tuning in. Uh, don't forget the uh, really great video contest, Follow Your Passion, at followyourpassion.com to get all the details. Uh, so if you are into video, definitely your chance to win some gear and $25,000. Uh, Trade Up to Z program is going on, so check that out at NikonUSA.com. If you didn't see our first episode with Joe uh, McNally, please go back and watch that. There's a lot of great insight that Joe gave us. And if you just tuned into a portion of this uh, segment with Dixie Dixon, episode two, you can come back and watch it in it, its entirety, and it'll be posted on Nikon Live on the unscripted page. Thank you for your passion. We thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you again, Dixie <laughs> Dixon, for being here with us. And we will see you next month with Christy Odom, a fashion, uh, a wedding photographer and filmmaker. Does a little bit of everything. She does wildlife, fashion, and wedding. And she is so amazing with movies and some of the things she's been doing with slow motion lately and wildlife. So tune in next month for Christy Odom. We appreciate you being here with us, and we will see you next month.